everybody, what's up? We're back for more movie previews. Uh, I'm Joe Baris, this is Rebecca Kivak. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we should just jump into it. We realize we're in the middle of the summer season right now, but there's still plenty out there uh, that we could preview for you. But just to start off, uh, Rebecca, how, how have you enjoyed your summer movie season so far? I realize that we haven't both been mm -hmm. really on top of our movies at at the moment, um, but uh, what have you seen? What have you liked? Um, well, this is probably true for most of you watching, but um, I've seen Avengers Endgame. Yes, yes. Um, I've actually <laughs> seen it three times, so I've seen it maybe a little more than most people, yeah. but um, I think that's why the summer got off to such an early start, yeah. honestly, because you yeah. had this big movie that everyone's been waiting for since right. last year. Right. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I laughed, yeah. I cried. Um, as someone who's been a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for like 11 years yeah. now, yeah. Um, this wrapped up 22 movies honestly perfectly. I couldn't have, couldn't have asked for a better um, for a better way to end this chapter. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I too have seen Avengers Endgame uh, only twice though, uh, so you have me beat there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I really couldn't have said it better myself. You know, I, this is everything that. I would have wanted as a fan. I, I think they really accomplished, I don't want to say fan service because I feel like that has a negative connotation, mm -hmm. but I think that this is a great movie for the fans. It's for us. It was, it, to me it felt like, like a love letter saying thank you for being with us so long. This is for you. And you're right. Perfect is really the way to describe it. Um, it's, the, it's not the greatest movie ever, but it is. it accomplished exactly what it set out to do, and you can't expect anything more. Another movie I saw uh, was Long Shot, um, kind of a kind of a lesser known film, but um, you know some big stars: Charlize Theron, uh, Seth Rogen, um, O'Shea Jackson, uh, Ice Cube's son. Uh, I think that's his name, um, and it was it was great. It was I, I really enjoyed it. The acting's great. I mean, Charlize is a goddess. She's amazing. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. That's not really your typical summer film, you know, but they dropped it in summer and um, I, I thought it was great. I got a lot out of it. Um, now, what else did you see? This um, I saw Pokemon Detective Pikachu. <laughs> Way to get the title so, right. Very good. I know, right? Well, I mean, I've seen it a couple different ways, yeah, so I'm like, I better yeah. get it right this time. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm actually a big Pokemon fan. I've been a fan of them since like the Game Boy games. We're talking yeah. a long time ago, right? Since the Game Boy games came out. Yeah. Um, and then when Pokemon Go came back, you know, right, um, right. I, you know, I, I, I don't play that as much as I used to, but I really got caught up in that when yeah. that, you know, came to our phones. Yeah. Um, so I was really happy to see them make like the first live action Pokemon film. And first off, it's adorable. <laughs> so um, it's so exciting to see how, how they transition the Pokemon from the games into real life. And if you're a Pikachu fan, this is going to be all for you. Um, Brian Reynolds is perfect as the voice of yeah. Pikachu. You know, you're so used to seeing that character say, Pika, Pika, <laughs> but here he's so funny. Um, yeah, and like, yeah. this is a movie for family and kids. So, you know, you get a lot of like, it, like it, the, the humor is appropriate for um, for kids. Right. But right. he does put in a couple of jokes that they definitely go over right. his heads. And yeah. if you're an adult, you're gonna catch this stuff. So um, it was just really cute. If you're a fan of Pokemon, there's a lot of Easter eggs in there that you'll catch. But if you're kind of new to it and you just think it looks like a cute movie and you want to see it, I think you'd be okay because it doesn't hit you over the head with the lore. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And, well, first let's jump into a, a movie that came out last weekend that maybe at least I was looking to see what the critical response would be, and that's Aladdin, mm -hmm. um, obviously a remake of Disney classic. Um, I thought the uh, promotion for this movie wasn't really great. Uh, you know, the the Will Smith blue thing was yeah. was a big deal for a while. I think they, I think they kind of course corrected that for the next trailer. He looked a lot better. Um, you know, uh, with a director like Guy Ritchie, who who's a who's a good director, he's a solid director. Um, I really enjoy the Sherlock Holmes movies uh, that he's done. Um, but honestly, the, the promotion was poor, so I wanted to wait to see what happened, you know, what people would say about it. And 
you know, despite the 58% on Rotten Tomatoes, a lot of people that I talk to say it's, it's pretty great. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Yeah, that? like I've seen a really positive response on yeah. Facebook, yeah. Um, and it killed it at the box office right. this weekend. So right. I think it made, what, like $112 million or yeah. something? Yeah. So, um, like what you said, um, one of the things I'm most interested to see in this is, is, how, um, is how Will Smith tackles the role yeah. of Genie. I yeah. mean, Robin Williams made that his own at first right. when they announced the casting. It was hard to think of anybody but Robin Williams. Like yeah. being this character, let alone live action. Right, right. But um, audiences have always liked Will Smith. Like he's one of yeah. the few actors who can actually carry a movie by himself. That's like true. he's one of the only people in I Am Legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I definitely want to see like what he does in this movie. Right. No, I'm I'm with you 100. percent um, So I mean, I'll I'll definitely be out to see that. Mm -hmm. um, let's continue on our uh, Disney slash Pixar category here that we've forced you into. Um, uh, the next movie I have on my list is Toy Story 4. Um, Rebecca, let's start with you this time. What do okay. you think? Um, I actually thought that Toy Story 3 wrapped up the franchise perfectly. True, that's true. Um, I mean, like that, like, first off, the Toy Story movies are so good, honestly. Yeah. Like, I almost feel like they get better with each movie. Yeah. Um, but that movie did, um, Toy Story 3 did such an exceptional job of, like, tapping some pretty deep issues they like did. even the concept yeah. of death like mm -hmm. they tackled that and presented yeah. that in a way that kids could understand right um and they just wrapped up the characters so well that like part of me is wondering how can this movie improve upon that right but you've got you've got all the regulars coming back yeah. you have tom hanks you have tim ellen how could this not be exactly. exciting yeah and i actually am really interested to see what they did with bo peep um, oh yeah. yeah there's there's been a there's been a lot set out there about the fact that she like they changed her costume she she doesn't have the pink dress anymore and she's wearing pants right so right. will she yeah. be more empowered in this film i hope so like i can't wait definitely. to see what they do with her definitely and i feel the same way um you know like like you were saying uh, three really was a, a beautiful wrap up mm -hmm. and to uh especially you know a, a person like me you know andy's age was really similar to my age growing up mm -hmm. so like when the movies were coming out it was like it it was pretty close, so like I felt like Andy, and like I got it, and uh, I may have cried a bit once the third one happened. It's um, hard not to during it, the third right, one, honestly. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, like you said, though, see, you know, seeing these characters back together again, uh, although the third one wrapped it up, um, I can't help but be excited for a fourth uh, for a fourth movie in this franchise. Uh, speaking of another big movie of this summer, The Lion King uh, should make. Uh, Disney quite a bit of money. <laughs> um, now, when it comes to me, I, I think that a lot of these um, re Disney reboots are, are very unnecessary. Um, I think a lot of them, I don't think they're bad, I just think they're lacking based on what we grew up with. Um, but I do think that it, it could be necessary to pass this on to, to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe they're just trying to also make some money. Uh, but getting to The Lion King, I think that uh, John Favreau taking this on, I think he's a very good director. Um, he also did The Jungle Book, which I think looked great. Again, I don't think it was as good as The Jungle Book. For a person my age to be, I feel like I'll be disappointed after seeing this movie just because I know what the original mm -hmm. is, essentially. But how do you feel going into the movie? Um, I'm I am excited because I am caught up, I am caught up in the nostalgia of, yeah, like yeah, between yeah. this and the Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Like that was an amazing period of my childhood to go and be able to see these movies. Right. Um, but then you make a great point. Um, you know Disney's been making so many of these live action remakes of their classic catalog. Like this year alone, think of this. This year alone, we have Dumbo. Aladdin, The Lion King. Yeah. First off, that's a lot for one year. Exactly. So I think they're running the risk of oversaturation absolutely, here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But um, out of those three, I honestly think most people are probably going to see The Lion Definitely. King. That I just agree. seems to have a special place in our hearts. Yeah. But um, you made a good point. Like, why are they remaking these movies? Are they trying to bring something different? And honestly, at first, I think they were. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. when they. Um, when you had the Jungle Book come out, I actually thought that was quite a bit. It expanded a lot upon the original, so I actually liked the new Jungle Book better. Liked it better, one. yeah, yeah. Um, and even with Cinderella, you had um, that movie actually took a, a deeper look at the prince and what was going on yeah. with him. Like that movie yeah. actually made some really good 
um, changes and just expanded upon some of the stuff in the original movie. Right. But it seems like more of these recent remakes are sticking closer to the original, so then we have to ask why right. make, why remake a classic at this point. Right, right. No, absolutely. We're leaving our Disney category here. We're leaving we're, our childhood behind. Yeah, we're leaving our childhood behind. Bye-bye. And we're moving to action. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> we're going to start with, um, this will be the lesser known, although I hope it's I hope it's gonna be really good, and uh, this movie's called Anna. Um, when when I first saw this this trailer, you know, the, this is a really good cast. You've got like a, a Luke Evans, uh, Cillian, Killian Murphy. I don't know. I still don't know. I think I it's like Cillian. An actor, though. Yeah, 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 he's he's very great good. Actor. Yeah. Can't um, say your name, but great actor. Right. Uh, I think we got a Helen Mirren in here as well. Oh, I was so happy to see yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's a lot of potential here. Um, Sasha Lus Luce. I'm not sure. I think I've name. seen her before, but yeah. I'm not sure where. She she was in uh, Valerian, the City of a Thousand Planets. That explains it, a lot. Yeah. Okay. okay. There you go. Yeah. So I think that this looks good. I think that the trailer scares me slightly. I guess my my issues would be I don't know anything about Sasha Luce. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never seen her. But I mean, the trailer makes her look great. I mean, it looks like she's doing her stunts. That's for sure. Um, but the the thing that scares me about the trailer is that they show at least the trailer I saw they show one action sequence. It's a heck of an action. Yeah, and it's a heck stuff. of an action yeah. sequence. Yeah, it looks great. Oof. It would it would really annoy me though if we went into to see this movie and that was the only like action mm -hmm. sequence or or they tried to fool us in a way. Um, also, uh, Luke Besson, not a fan. I run hot and cold with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like that the trailer says like from the producer of Lucy and like, I like Lucy's Lucy. one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Actually, same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in recent years, especially. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but I'm cautiously optimistic, I guess, about this movie. But what, what do you think? I'm with you. Um, I think it's fair to draw a comparison between this movie and Atomic Blonde. Yes. Frankly, yeah. Because um, if you if you haven't seen the trailer for this, check it out because there's some definite Atomic Blonde vibes in right, it. Right. Um, you know, you you have a spy story here. You mm -hmm. have what looks to be possibly an action-heavy film, but we don't really know because we haven't seen the movie yet. True. That was True. the issue with Atomic Blonde. The trailers mm -hmm. looked amazing for it. It looked like it was wall-to-wall -wall action. Yeah. But when you saw the movie, um, it really there wasn't that much action. It was very spread out. Yeah. And honestly, the trailer actually showed you every single one of the action That's set true. pieces in Atomic That's true. Blonde. Yeah. Um, so that you go in having certain expectations for a movie based on the trailer, and then you know you see the movie and it doesn't meet those expectations. Right. I have the same worry about this movie. That action sequence looks amazing. Amazing. Yeah. You got gunplay. Yeah. It's set in a restaurant and there's people fighting each other with broken dishes. Right. Right. Exactly. That's, that just sounds crazier well, awesome. off the bat. Yeah. But. You made a great point. That's the only action that they actually showed. So is mm. that the only action set piece in the movie, right. or is it the best one? Are they right. just showing us the best parts here, and right. we don't know? So yeah, I think we're. I think honestly, I think we're fine to be going into this skeptical. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and hopefully, hopefully they are hiding some some I nice hope. nuggets and not horrible plot points like Atomic Blonde, like mm -hmm. you were saying. That was a great comparison. Um, moving on to. Uh, this should be a blast. Uh, Fast and Furious yes. uh, presents Hobbs and Shaw. I mean, you know, first of all, you you got two of the most charismatic actors in the business mm -hmm. today, and Jason Statham and The Rock, and then all of a sudden you throw Idris Elba. Yes. So like, oh yes. I mean, I, I like how could this even fail? You've got a director in David Leach who's experienced with movies like John Wick and uh, Atomic Blonde. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Atomic Blonde. Um, so. It, you know he's going to be very good with the action. It just uh, this movie to me. I mean, I don't really have so much to say about it. Is that like I'm 110 percent on board just mm -hmm. because it looks so like so much fun, and you know it, it doesn't even have to be the greatest movie. You know it just it just looks like a blast at the mm -hmm. theater. But what do you think? I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah. Um, I am a big fan of the franchise. Yeah. But honestly, yeah. I was disappointed with Fate of the Furious. Me too. It me was. Too. Like darker. Than it was. It was too dark. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you really felt the loss of Paul Walker. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, the best parts of that movie were Jason Statham and The Rock. Right. So right. apparently, other people realize this, and the fact they're getting their own spin-off yeah. is fantastic. Right. Um, and right. like you said, 
it, this movie doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but it looks like so much fun. Just put the fun back in the Fast and Furious. That's what I want. Right. <laughs> I, lo I love it. I love it. Um, so moving on to our next action film, uh, we have Angel Has Fallen. Now, Rebecca is much more <laughs> uh, experienced in this franchise than I am. I've only seen the first one. Believe it or not, this is the third film in this franchise. Um, but just quickly before I throw it to you, mm -hmm. it, it has it, it's been very smart. I mean, the second film made more money than the first and had a lesser production budget. So, I mean, it's a smart franchise. Mm -hmm. But what do you think of the franchise, and are you excited for this? Yeah, I, I honestly like the franchise. Yeah. Um, you know, Olympus, what Olympus Has Fallen is a fantastic film. Yeah. Um, it actually, a lot of people have compared it to, to, to Die Hard underneath the yeah. White House. And it, yeah. yeah, it just, it the action was really well done. It had that suspense to it. I also saw London Has Fallen, yeah. which um, that that was more, to me that movie was more fun. Um, it wasn't maybe quite as good in terms of the action as the first movie, but I had so much fun with it because um, because um, Gerald Butler is great with hey. one-liners. <laughs> um, he got funnier in between the, first, the two movies yeah. and his, his comedic talent really shows through and London has fallen right. but yet you expect him to be able to protect the president he goes through right. the first two movies protecting the president from different threats in Angel has fallen he actually is considered to be the threat to the president yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. he's apparently being um, framed for trying to assassinate the president right. who is actually played by Morgan Freeman in this so we had a changing of the guard it's no longer Aaron Eckhart right. it's right. Morgan Freeman so I like that they're actually putting a twist on what yeah. we've come to know from the franchise. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing with this movie is the first two movies actually came out in March, which is you know usually not a big month for, for blockbusters sure, or for sure. action-heavy movies, although it's kind of starting to change. True, that's true. But this is the first time a film in this franchise has come out during the summer. This is actually coming out in August. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that because, like you said, because this franchise has just been so successful yeah. at the, the box office, they've been smart about their budget and you know their marketing and when they've been putting this out here maybe they think they can even get a bigger draw by putting it out during the summer that's true and you're you're absolutely right i think you know i guess for me as far as the movies go i i too really enjoyed olympus has fallen i just i just didn't see a need for like another film so i never saw london has fallen um but yeah i, I mean i think ultimately what we're saying here is you know it's it's been a solid franchise and it's it's making money for itself. It's yeah. being smart. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move on to our next category. We've got sequels and reboots, and we're actually going to start with a movie that comes out this weekend. Yeah. Um, um. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Uh, now, I to speak to Godzilla. I really loved the first one. Now this one, it looks like they are answering to. Uh, people that may have had how you felt about mm -hmm. the first film and now they're just putting like a ton of monsters in it and I, I don't know I haven't seen the film obviously yet it comes out this weekend mm -hmm. um, but it really seems like they're just trying to uh, ramp up this one but, but what do you think no I think so too just from the marketing I've seen for this um, the main visual image you get is of Godzilla and King Ghidorah just running at yeah, each other. Yeah. So they definitely want you to know this is a movie about monsters fighting. Right, right. And yeah, I like I did like the first movie, but I had my criticisms mm -hmm. about it. Um the, the twenty fourteen one. Um yeah, that was directed by Garrett Edwards. Yeah, and yeah. he used the tactic of giving us teases and glimpses of yeah. Godzilla and it took a really long time it before did. we saw <laughs> Godzilla on screen, which that for me as a viewer, the movie's called Godzilla. I'm expecting to see a lot of Godzilla, True. and we really didn't until the last act. So yeah, I'm one of the people who right. honestly had that as a criticism of the film, and right. it looks like this film is addressing that because we get not yeah. only you know um, we get not only Godzilla and Ghidorah, but we're getting Mothra, Mothra, um, yeah. who I like Mothra, yeah. um, and we're getting Rodan too. So right, we're getting right. like four monsters in yeah. this thing, which is crazy. Exactly. So we'll we'll see how that is, um, but yeah, I, I think you're right that hopefully they focus more on the monsters and less on uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. It does have a good cast though. It does, honestly. exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, you got Vera Farmiga, who's yeah. well known from the Conjuring movies. Right, um, right. I may be the only person who hasn't seen Stranger Things, but Millie wow. Bobby Brown is, yeah. Yeah, is, is in this movie. So, Our next uh, sequel 
will be uh, The Secret Life of Pets 2. And uh, just quickly for me, because I, I know you haven't seen the, the first film. No. Uh, I, 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 personally, I don't think you're really missing anything. I think this is a, I think this is a harmless uh, kids film. Um, you know, it's, it, it has its funny moments, and I, I think it's something that kids would enjoy. Mm -hmm. And but it's 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 not very deep. There's not there's not really there's not really much to it essentially. So this, uh, like you said, Harrison Ford is voicing a dog. Yeah, <laughs> which, I'm excited about that. Which is exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but to me, I I wasn't really clamoring for a second one of these. Mm -hmm. Although I was thinking they're probably going to make a second one. So honestly, I like the first one, but I don't really have much of an interest in general in seeing the second one. Um, do you have any thoughts about it? Or? Um, no, just I know that this seems to be a big movie for um, for families. Yes. Like, my friends yeah. who have kids I know have seen this movie. And it was a hit when it came out. It was. So yeah. um, to me it makes sense they'd make a sequel, but apart from Harrison Ford, you know, voicing yeah. a dog in it, that's, I'm not really that interested in it. Right, exactly. Um, so let's move on to uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Um, Okay, so this is actually the seventh X-Men film. Yeah. And it's probably going to be the final one, honestly, because, um, you know, with Disney buying Fox, they now have the rights to all of the Marvel stuff. Right. So this incarnation of X-Men, this is probably going to be it. If we see the X-Men in the future, they'll probably be integrated somewhere down the line into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right, right. But for right now, this is what we get. And I am not sure what to think about this film right. because depending right. on which trailer you see, yeah. it looks really good or it looks like it could be bad and a repeat of The Last yeah. Stand, which I'm really terrified about the latter. Right, right. One of the big issues I have had with the marketing and promotion for this film is that um, in the second trailer, they let drop a really big spoiler right. Right. that one of the main characters is going to be killed. And I don't understand why you would do that. Why wouldn't you save that kind of revelation for the actual film? Right, right, exactly. So that has me worried if they're if they're already saying, hey, this person's going to die, there's going to be more of that in the film, yeah. why did you need to put that out there unless your film maybe isn't that good? Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm kind of thinking. Um, I'm... Pretty, I'm pretty worried about this film. Yeah. I, I love the, I love the franchise, and I love, uh, you know, the characters that they have put in to be the younger characters that we've we've grown up with. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm worried. I'm hopeful, <laughs> but yeah. but ultimately worried. Uh, you know, uh, Sophie Turner, which I, I think, I think this could be really interesting for her. You know, to try to break out of. You know, Game of Thrones just right. ending, and I, so that's why, like, I, I really hope this works out because I really like everyone involved. But um, like you said, mm -hmm. I'm worried. That's yeah. All. Like, despite my concerns, like I don't want this film to fail. No. I want it to be really good. No. Um, like you said, Sophie Turner, honestly, in these trailers, she's she looks like she's giving a great performance. Yes. So I hope that's true. Yeah. Um, and the cast, you have Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Jennifer Lawrence, you've got a lot of, you know, key people on this who have been right. great throughout the franchise. Right. So, right. Um, if this is it for these actors in these roles, I would like it to go out on a high note. Exactly. I'm exactly. just worried because the, some of the plots seem so similar to The Last Stand, yeah. like with them being in Jean's old oh. neighborhood and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just, I think there's there's a lot here to be optimistic about, but there's a lot here to be worried about. Alright, moving on to our next sequel? Yeah, sequel. Um, <laughs> It'll be Shaft, uh, which I guess is a sequel to Shaft. Yeah. From 2000. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> which is a sequel to Shaft, I yep. guess. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of, you know, d but honestly, to get to to the meat of it, uh, when I when I first saw a trailer for this, and I said, look, it looks funny. It I does. mean, I mean, it, yeah. it, it honestly, like, it, it looks pretty good. Um, I I will generally give movies that have Samuel Jackson a benefit of the doubt because I think he's great. Mm -hmm. I, he's enjoyable, you know. Whether he's being like, whether he's tackling a great acting role like uh, like Tarantino usually gives him, mm -hmm. or more of a more of a fun acting role, he he could really do it all, honestly. And so I'm. I'm gonna give this a shot because and they're bringing back Richard Roundtree. That's um, incredible, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good. I, I was really I was really sold on the trailer 
for this, honestly. But what yeah, you I liked it too. Like, yeah. I liked how it, it had that sense of humor right off the bat. And yeah. there's this one scene where you see um, the, the three of them, like, wearing the same coats yeah. and they're just, like, walking across right. the street. Like, I love that. That looks yeah. great. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, could be good. Yeah, we'll, give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. Um, here's another movie that I'm, I'm optimistic about, but kind of unsure of. Men in Black International. What do you think about this? Okay, I, I think this looks like a lot of fun. Like, yes, honestly, yeah. I'm just going into the mindset of this being a fun popcorn movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the first Men in Black. I think most people do. Yes. I didn't see the second, which a lot of people said is good. It's not the best one, though. I like the third one, though. <laughs> I do, too, a lot. So, yeah. yeah, maybe I'm hoping this maybe will have the better parts of the franchise in it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'm hopeful about too is the chemistry between Chris Hemsworth yeah. and Tessa Thompson. Like they were fantastic in Thor Ragnarok. Right, right. And yeah. to see them, you know, be in another movie, and if this, yeah. I mean, if this succeeds, we might get a new franchi That's franchise. That's true. With them. That's true. So I'm kind of focusing on the positives yeah. about it right now. That's what I'm excited about. Um, I I am a big fan of the franchise. Actually, I even like to, and I, but I totally admit that it's not. It's not the greatest film. I, I I thought that three was really good to and to give us the turn that it took. I think it really worked. Um, yeah, it was so, very emotional. Right, but earned. Right, it, but earned absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so I mean I like the franchise, so I'm definitely willing to give this a shot. And like you said, the thing I am most excited about is definitely uh, Chris Hemsworth with Tessa Thompson. I, I think they're both great, and like you said, they've been they've both been great together in a movie before. Yeah. So I, I think that you're right in that. I'm willing to give this franchise the the benefit of the doubt. Um, there are there are a few negative things that like uh, there. The there little are a few alien things, guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm worried there, about him too. Right. There are things that worry me, but ultimately, I'm definitely willing to give this a shot based on what I've seen in the past from the franchise and from these actors. Honestly. Um, our next film that we have here is Spider-Man Far From Home, which is oddly the last film of uh, Phase 3 yeah, of, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which you would think it'd be Endgame, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, this is going to end, um, end Phase 3 of the MCU. Uh, what, what do you think from what you've seen? Um, I'm I'm actually excited about this because yeah. it looks like it's going to deal with with the aftermath of yeah. Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get into spoilers about here about that here, just right. in case there are some of you who haven't seen it yet. But um, one of the things this happened in Infinity War was when when Thanos snapped and half of you know half of existence disappeared. Right. But now everybody's back. I think it's okay if we say that. I think probably figured that yeah. out. Um, everybody's back, but they've there are some people who have missed out on five years of their life. Right, right. Um, and then there was also a chain reaction from the snap that apparently caused a hole in our dimension. Right. And as a result of that, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to be entering into some new territory here. They're bringing yeah. in the idea of a multiverse, yeah. which means you've got like different Earths in different universes, yeah. but they're yeah. existing parallel to each other. Right. Right. Um, this is a concept that, that, that the DC has played with on their shows, yeah. on the CW. They've yeah. been doing this for a couple years, mm -hmm. and honestly, they've been doing a fantastic job with yeah. it. So I'm really interested to see Spider-Man, of all the movies, venture right. into this territory. Right. Um, it's interesting, like you said, that this movie is wrapping up Phase 3, right. but when you're dealing with something as fast as the multiverse, this opens up True. so many story possibilities does, yeah. for Phase 4, so I'm right. excited about that. Right, definitely, and you have, you have tons of... Uh, had started to say it, but I mean, there's so many rumors like maybe this is how the X-Men get here, right. or maybe this is, you know, maybe even like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, maybe this is like a, a real connection mm -hmm. between, you know, between the two, um, between those films. So, I mean, like you said, I, I, I'm excited for the possibilities that this may have, and also, it looks like it's going to be a pretty darn good movie, yes, you know? Yeah, like, it does. Uh, Tom Holland and bringing in Jake Gyllenhaal and 
Oh, he's such a good actor. Yes. Like, I honestly have somebody like that joining the MCU. It shows right. you just... And, and the MCU has so many fantastic yeah. in it to, it to begin with, but all yeah. these, you know, someone of his caliber joining, it just right. adds even more to it. Exactly. And, you know, that's a, I guess it shouldn't shock us as much right, at, this, at point, this point, but, like, still, like, could, could you have ever imagined a time where you'd get actors for the caliber of, like, Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. and, like, mm -hmm. you know, we've had Robert Redford, we have, you know, we've had so many, Kate mm -hmm. Blanchett, I mean, oh, yeah. so many entering this franchise, mm -hmm. so I I just hope that this it continues to build, Absolutely. essentially, mm -hmm. on, on the franchise. Um, this is really funny that this movie is next on the list, <laughs> but apparently there's a 47 meters down, uncaged, which is a sequel to 47 Meters Down. Now, I think the thing that annoys me most about it is why is it not called 48 Meters Down? That's a good <laughs> question. I didn't see the first one, so I can't answer it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I haven't either. That's a good point, yeah. though, math. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I didn't think this movie was real, but, oh, it's real, and it's <laughs> coming. It's coming, so I don't know if it's to a theater near us or whatever, but uh, it's coming. We can't really say much about it, though. No, um, <laughs> the one interesting thing of note was that Sylvester Stallone's daughter will be that's making right. her acting debut. That's so right. um, her name is Sistine St Stallone. So that's, hey, we've got that. So exactly. I think you salvaged that very, <laughs> very well. Give us a nice little nugget. Um, so I guess what I have, I think we're done with uh, our sequels, reboots category. Yeah. Here, which is crazy. A uh, lot of them this summer. There, yeah, there's quite a bit. Um, but now we're gonna talk about a few musical films. Well, not musicals, sorry. But um, we have opening this weekend, Rocket Man. Yes. Um, which I mean, it looks great. I mean, I'll, I'll let you take it away okay. first. Yeah. Um. Th this is going to be a musical biopic. I guess that's what we could call it. A musical yeah. Biopic. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. About about Alton John's life, and his life is crazy to begin yeah. with so um yeah. what i like uh, if you've seen the trailers it seems like they're going to be adding like a magical realism quality to right. this um and that's perfect for a performer who's already larger than life yeah 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 true so i'm looking forward to that aspect of it but yeah. um apparently um th this is directed by dexter fletcher yes who um yes. if that name is not familiar to you he actually directed bohemian rhapsody after brian singer was yes. let go yeah but his mm -hmm. name isn't on it brian singer was right. able to retain his name on that film mm -hmm. but if you like bohemian rhapsody i think there's a really good chance that you're gonna like this movie too definitely and uh, i i'm gonna go ahead and throw a prediction out there i think this movie's gonna be better than bohemian rhapsody i think really. it will too um and you know, I, I love uh, Taron Egerton. Um, you got, and uh, the director has worked with him before. He also directed Eddie the Eagle. Um, oh, okay. So, I, I just think that this looks great. Uh, you know, I I love Elton John. I mean, who doesn't? But you know, it's I just really think that I'm I'm excited to see uh, you know Taron Egerton actually get. A role like this, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I think he's very talented. We've seen, you know, in his young career with Kingsman and, you know, even Eddie the, Eddie the Eagle. I actually enjoyed that movie. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be great. I, I don't really have much more to say about it because, but I'm just, I'm super pumped, honestly. Do you think? Do you think in a way this might be we might be getting a head start on awards season? I do. Taron's looking really good right? in this movie. Yeah, I and know. he's doing his own singing, which is impressive. Which is really impressive. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Uh, that, uh, that's why I just think that this this movie's gonna be better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Whether it'll have the same impact, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. But um, but I do agree with you. I, th I think we're already getting into award season. We'll be mm -hmm. we'll be definitely talking about this later down the I hope road. so too. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a different film. Uh, it's called Yesterday, um, it, which obviously deals with a lot of Beatles songs. But the premise is that I don't understand exactly what happens. Is there like a power outage around the world? I yeah, like I get. I think you know that's a good question. Yeah. Um, when I've been doing research about this film, it's made a point to say that like well, it, it's it's about a struggling singer songwriter who has an accident. Right. And then when he wakes up, he's the only one who remembers all the right. Beatles songs and lyrics. Was there really an accident that happened at the exact same time? Is a good question, right. or is it just a story where he like you know had an accident and is he 
I, I hope I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. But is he maybe right. in a coma this whole time? Like, right. we don't know. That's true, yeah. But the story right. he's told is that, yeah, there was a power outage around the world. And then yeah. everybody wakes up and seemingly loses memory of the Beatles, right. except for him. Right, exactly. Which is actually an interesting premise. It's probably most interesting to me because I like the Beatles a lot. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, but, I mean, I think it looks very good. I think that, you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see, like, what the what the plot is, or what the story ends up like revealing I think right. it, I think it could really make or break the film because it looks it looks very good it looks you know very entertaining obviously with a lot of Beatles music so mm -hmm. I think people are gonna enjoy it we've got a great director in place and Danny yeah. Boyle mm -hmm. who I've really enjoyed his career and his versatility in movies honestly mm -hmm. um, so uh, to me I'm I'm on board with this movie. Oh yeah, um, I I am too. I'm actually yeah. a huge Beatles fan. I've been go. a fan of yeah. theirs since high school. So yeah. like just hearing their songs right. in the trailer, like there's so many good memories with them, and they're such exactly. great songs. Right. So I'm like, like this movie could come out tomorrow, and I would just run to right. it because I can't wait for this to right. come out. And it looks like cute, you know, it does, it's like yeah. nice at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited for this. Yeah. This should be good. Absolutely. We got a couple comedies here. Uh, which I think both of them look really good. Uh, the first one we have here, the one that comes out uh, June 7th, will be Late Night, um, starring Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling. This is, I, I, I could be wrong here, but when I was looking up directors for these films, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is the first one that I saw that actually had a female director. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I noticed which that is, too. Uh, which is a little, I, I thought we would have had one by now, right, you know, yeah. but... I mean that's great. I mean, it, and, it, and it looks like it's it, it's going to be a pretty good film um, with with the idea of that uh, Emma Thompson uh, is running a late night television show and she's it, her show has gone stale essentially, mm -hmm. and Mindy Kaling's coming in to kind of spice it up essentially, and uh, I, I think it could be a, a really a really nice film. What do you think? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, Emma Thompson's actually one of my favorite actresses. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to plug her here because she's also in Men in Black International. Well, that's true. So we get a double dose of yeah. Emma Thompson this summer. That's true. But this seems like something she would be fantastic yeah. at. She's so yeah. good with comedy, but there's clearly going to be, I think, a dramatic angle as, oh, she's, yeah. as she's dealing with the fact that, hey, like your, your show is stale. Right. They want to cancel her show, so mm -hmm. she's got to figure out how do I bring life back into this. Right. And it looks like she's going to discover herself in the process mm -hmm. that she's working with Mindy Kaling's character. Right. So I, I always like movies that have to do with like some sort of self-discovery. Agreed. So to Agreed. see one of my favorite actresses play a character like that, it just yeah. definitely makes me want to see this movie. Absolutely. And uh, the, the, the next movie on this list is, is Stuber. And I'm pretty... <laughs> Oh man, I'm pretty excited for this. It's the first thing I saw was a poster with uh, Kamel Nanjiani and Dave Bautista, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, okay, I'll see this movie. <laughs> I didn't need, even need to know about it, but I, I I laughed very hard at this trailer. There are a few sequences in the trailer that are very funny to me. Uh, love Kamel Nanjiani, mm -hmm. uh, love Dave Dave Bautista, and honestly, you know. It, it's it's really cool to see a guy like Dave Bautista, who has limitations, mm -hmm. but he knows what he can do, and he does those things very well as an actor. And he's been very successful building an acting career out of what he is capable of, and it, it's just it's just great to see him on screen here. I, I mean, he he can obviously do comedy, he can obviously mm -hmm. do action, so he's he's doing both in this film, and I'm I'm really excited to see what comes out of this one. What do you think? Yeah, he's an actor who's really surprised me. Like, yeah. like I remember him when he was on WWE. Right. I did watch that at one point in time, and I remember him being on there. And yeah. I, I, it didn't really, I think, occur to me that that could translate to that he could translate to the silver screen, and exactly. he definitely has. He like has. between yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. he can even go dramatic. Like right. he has a really small but pivotal role in Blade Runner twenty forty nine exactly. that was so impressive. Exactly. So it's great to see him get more more opportunities at what he's good at. Exactly, and even in uh, Spectre. Where he plays a, a hitman who just he doesn't really say anything, but like he all he needs to do is just like hit people, and it's just <laughs> like and, it's, and it actually makes for the best action sequence of Spectre, which wow. is kind of a lacking James Bond film, honestly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mean, these are two great people. I think we're in for some laughs and some 
<laughs> a pretty fun movie, honestly. <laughs> Next, we're going to go into uh, the indie territory here uh, with, now, now again, I think I say this every time for our movie previews, mm -hmm. Midsom uh, Midsummer. Midsummer, Midsummer, yeah. Midsummer. You didn't tell me that it was a horror Sorry. Movie. <laughs> I should have warned you. And uh, it's from the director of Hereditary, I believe. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Um, so th this gave me, this gave me an odd vibe. Um, if you've seen, it, it does remind me of Hereditary, honestly. Yeah. Um, which was a uh, creepy, but actually pretty solid horror movie in my opinion. I know you have similar and and different, yeah. you know, uh -huh. um, op opinion of it. Uh, but it it gave me this odd like. Wicker Man vibe. Oh, I got the same you thing, know? yeah. Um, which I've never seen the original, but I've seen the Nicolas oh, Cage no, one. Oh, I was really hoping <laughs> that it was the opposite. Yeah, I yeah. Seen the original and not the Nicolas Ex Cage one. Exactly, but um, I don't know. It's got a good vibe. It's got it's got a pretty good director. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be solid. What do you think? Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't warn you about this, this film <laughs> is because um, when you start watching the trailer, this does not look like your typical trailer for a horror no, movie. You've, no. It blinds you with bright colors, with yeah. flowers. Like I think it's described as 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 like a folk a folk horror film. Yeah. Because it takes place in Sweden at this festival that happens every ninety years. So. Right. It looks beautiful. Like it, it really doesn't look like what you think a horror film would look like. Right, right. But then as you keep watching the trailer, you can tell there's something very disturbing underneath the surface right. of it. There's right. you know little sounds and noises and images here and there that flash at you. So um, yeah, this is from the director of her Hereditary, like you said. Yeah. That's a really well-made film, right. which I appreciated. But it also really left me unsettled, and I'm yeah. not sure that I actually like it. Yeah. But that yeah. could just mean the film was effective. True, true. So going into this film, I'm apprehensive because, um, you know, it, it's probably going to be well made, but will right. I like it? I don't know. Right, right. I don't know, but um, I did see the original Wicker Man. If, if this is anything like that, we're, we're going to be very frightened. Right, Yeah, exactly. um, in, in a good way, hopefully. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> if you've seen the Nicolas Cage one, I'm sorry, I saw that in the theater when it came oh, out. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I would almost... Yeah. Steak, you know, I would almost say this has to be better has than be. that. It has to it be, has yeah. To be, no doubt. Um, and actually, you, you brought up a good point. To just, just to build off of, Hereditary was a critically acclaimed film that audiences didn't enjoy. Uh, Very gen polarizing, generally, yeah. uh, I don't want to say everybody, but mm -hmm. you know, it's it's kind of similar to like. I think, wasn't The Witch similar or something? I or? felt the same way about The Witch. Yeah. The Witch was incredibly well made, yeah. a very good attention to period detail, but I felt like it missold you. It said it was a horror right. movie, it was more like um, like a period piece with horror elements. Right, right. So exactly. yeah, critically acclaimed audience is very divided on that too. Right, so... This we'll might fall into the same category. Exactly, exactly. So we'll see if that plays out. Um, the other... The other indie movie here, and I don't know how much you got on this, you know, Brittany Runs a Marathon. Yeah. Um, I, I couldn't find a ton on it. Um, you know, I, I know Jillian Bell from, like, a few things. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I don't know, and, and she is talented, but I don't really know much about this film. I'm not sure either, yeah. Um, I guess, like, a little bit about the plot I found out, it's about a woman who, um, she's taking control of her life by running a little more every day. I guess she's told, look, your health is going downhill. If you right. don't start to make changes, you might die, or your health right. at least might worsen, you know? So it starts with her running, uh, like, a block, and then a few blocks, and then a mile, which sounds really inspirational. Right. So if that's right. what the story is, that sounds like it'll be great. And Absolutely. I'm a little unsure as to whether this is a comedy or not, because I, like, I know Jillian Bell for her comedic, for comedic roles, yeah. um, so yeah. if this is more of a dramatic turn for her, I'd right. like to see what, she, what she's capable of and what she can do in it. Exactly, and then, uh, you, know, you know, just to echo what you said, I, I think she's talented, I, I think this movie definitely has a good premise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it sounds like something that, you know, I, I would enjoy and could give her some really critically, be a pretty good a critically acclaimed film essentially yeah. so um, moving on to we're entering the drama category here and the first one we have is 21 bridges starring Chadwick Boseman and honestly uh, 
it was at that point where I was just like, uh, I'll see it. I'll see it. Oh, and yeah. Then, you, know, yeah. Uh, you know, Chadwick Boseman, I've, I've loved him ever since. You know, ever since 42 came out, where he's Jackie Robinson. And, and then he plays uh, uh, James Brown and is in uh, Get On Up. And it's just like, geez, if he is playing this many mm -hmm. icons, this guy's a master um, of acting. So, I mean, I'm in, but honestly, to me, this movie doesn't look like it's anything special. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope I hope I'm wrong, uh, because I'm sold, like I said, on Bozeman. And J.K. Simmons is in it, um, so I mean, there's there's definitely some positives here. But to me, it just it just kind of looks like a run of the mill. I feel like we've seen a movie like mm -hmm. this before. But, but what do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's he's the big draw for me yeah. too. Um, I'm also optimistic because the producers on this film are Joe and Anthony Russo. Oh yeah, yeah. And all three of them yeah. work together on yeah. you know the the Avengers films. Right. So um, right. I'm thinking if they have, it seems like they must have had a really good working relationship that yeah. they're working together again. So yeah. I think something like that can boost a movie. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. so yeah, um, like you said, I'm not sure if it's going to be that different from others in in you know in in the crime genre. Right. But right. I'll give it a shot. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Um, the next movie we have here is The Art of Racing in the Rain. Now, this is, uh, the trailer was actually really surprising to me mm -hmm. um, in the beginning because you have Kevin Costner talking and uh, he's voicing a dog, mm -hmm. um, which you don't realize until like 30 seconds into the trailer. I mean, honestly, the, my, my big takeaway from this is it just, it, lo it looks adorable. Oh, honestly. yeah. It, um, and it, it looks like, I, I wouldn't want this, I, I feel like I wouldn't want to push this into like a, jog, a dog's journey, a dog's mm -hmm. purpose, like those movies that are coming out. I feel like this could be honestly something better. And uh, director Simon Curtis, mm -hmm. he's done a movie that I liked, uh, A Woman in Gold. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, but, with Helen Mirren. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I think a great it's a pretty solid movie. That was so, underrated, actually. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so, I mean, I think this could be pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, um, I've actually been hearing about this movie for a long time because it's about a race car driver. Yeah. And some of my friends who are racing fans read the book, and it's been um, it's been known for a while that a movie was going to be made about it. Yeah. I think it's been in development for a while, but I'm not sure. I guess it's just been a really long process. But right. when I was doing research for this, I found a 2011 article that said Patrick Dempsey was attached to start. Oh, it. okay, yeah. And yeah. he he actually is a race car driver in real life, so right. would have been a good fit. But right. I'm not sure why that didn't pan out. True. Maybe just too much time has passed. Yeah, yeah. But um, this sounds like a, a, a cute, adorable movie. Yeah, I like the yeah. fact that there's a racing aspect to it. Right, but right. it does seem like dog movies. You know, maybe this isn't quite the same yeah. as other dog Correct. dogs, dogs yeah. purpose movies that you mentioned, but right. it's definitely a trend right now. Um, right. A Dog's Journey just came out this month. Yeah. You know, so yeah. people seem to have an appetite for dog centric movies. Exactly, and I'm glad you said the racing element because I literally was just like, it's a movie about a talking dog. Like, <laughs> I don't think that's the main purpose of the mm -hmm. film. Um, so thank you for adding sure. context to what I was saying. <laughs> um, now this is actually this next film, uh, The Kitchen. Now. Did you see the trailer? It literally dropped last night. No, I didn't. Yeah. No, I feel bad now. No, no, no I didn't it's, see it. it's not your fault. I was I was watching the NBA Finals, Game One of the NBA Finals, mm -hmm. and they decided to drop the trailer. Oh. Yeah. So we we were actually a little upset. Like we don't know a ton about this movie, and then all of a sudden I'm sitting there watching basketball, and it's just like the kitchen, um, and it's just it showed a trailer for it. Now what we knew mm -hmm. going in was that this is this is a really solid cast, and I think we're both. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited for what this film is capable of. Yeah. Um, to me, when I when I saw the trailer, and and granted, I actually saw the smaller one. They said for a full trailer, go go, oh. go to YouTube. Okay. Uh, so I haven't seen that yet, but I saw the and M M the one during the NBA Finals, um, and to me, it looks odd because you have a, a bunch of women who are known for comedy. Starring in this, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have Tif Tiffany Haddish and Melissa McCarthy, and uh, I mean, these are just good actresses. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that this can't be done. I actually think it's going to be a very good movie. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, looking looking at this trailer and just being like, oh, this is a drama. This is a drama. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a it, it kind of jerks you to be like, oh, okay, we have to take take, take into account that this is a dramatic yeah. movie. I, I think it looks. Pretty interesting. Uh, the wives of New York 
uh, New York Gangsters and Hell's Kitchen in the 1970s continue to operate their husbands' uh, rackets after they're locked <laughs> up in prison. That was from IMDb, <laughs> um, <laughs> clearly. Uh, but I, I, I think this this looks great. Um, director Andrea Burloff, uh, she, I think she's a first time director, but she helped write straight out of the Compton. Wow, okay, uh, yeah, that's which a Which is good really great, yeah, which is a really great credit to have. Um, and so honestly, the, the little we know about it, I, I'm I'm pretty excited for it. What do you think? Yeah, I, like I, I actually put this one on here just because I saw the cast alone. And I'm yeah. like, you have these these women known for comedy doing drama. This right. is going to be great. And right. um, I mean, like we're like Melissa McCarthy. I've shown what she can do. Right. You know, she was right. nominated for Can You Ever Forgive Me yeah. for best uh, for best actress, yeah. um, which is honestly like this is going to sound strange, but I watched her on Gilmore Girls, so I knew she was yep. capable of a lot right. of stuff. It was you know you know she's built her movie career on comedy, but she's actually a very versatile actress. Exactly. So it's nice exactly. to see her starting to get more recognition for her dramatic abilities and just like I don't know how Tiffany Haddish is going to be in this but I'm so I, excited because exactly. I like Tiffany Haddish a lot this will be exactly. great exactly I think that the you know, actors or actresses you know, moving over moving from comedy to drama mm -hmm. I feel like it comes really easily to them I don't know I, I've never been an actor so I don't know but but I but I feel like uh, you know you can make that turn pretty easily and even get yourself some awards for it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I'm very excited, and, and it's funny because like you mentioned those two great actresses, and then there's also like Elizabeth Moss. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It, it, we're not trying to like not mention her. Exactly. She's, exactly. Uh, you know, Emmy winner she's fantastic. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. so I mean, this is just a great cast, and probably it's probably gonna be a great time at the right. movies. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have the Informer. Uh, uh, again, to me, there. This is a solid. I, I think all in all, it's a pretty solid cast. Um, I'm not completely sold on Joel Kinnaman mm -hmm. yet, um, but you know you have Rosamund Pike and she's great. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. You even have a Clive Owen in here. Mm -hmm. um, so, and uh, this comes from the producers of Sicario, I believe. Mm -hmm. So there's definite potential but this just to me this just seems like a run-of-the-mill action film yeah what do you think? I'm more excited for 21 bridges yes we're gonna yeah. look at the the other films you know that we've talked about in this category um, yeah. yeah like this I the cast is really solid um, right. I actually did like Joel Kinnaman in Suicide Squad I might be the only person who did <laughs> I actually thought he was fine in it <laughs> um, but yeah I I'm not sure if this movie really grabs me. It right. seems like it might be right. more generic, like you said. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I actually like Joel Kinnaman in House of Cards, uh, come oh. to think of it. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, you know, this, this just, did, it, it didn't do much for me when I saw the trailer, you know, just like we were saying, mm -hmm. run of the mill, and I think it comes out in August. Yeah, so yeah. You, that may lead to it's not that great, and they're throwing it in August. But mm -hmm. hopefully we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We don't root for movies to be bad. No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it may sound like we do, but we really yeah, don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, we have our next category, my favorite category, <laughs> horror. Horror. Um, so we've got, we've got a few movies here, and I'm really going to try to lean on Rebecca for these. Um, Rebecca. The <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the dead don't die. Oh, mm -hmm. tell us. Okay, so um, th this is this is this looks like a movie that's trying to put a spin on the zombie genre, which yeah. is kind of becoming tired, honestly. True. Um, True. you've got a lot of stars in this movie. You've got um, Bill Murray, yeah. Adam Driver, um, Chloe Savini. Um, the awesome thing about the casting here for Bill Murray is that he had a really great role yeah. in Zombieland, yeah. and apparently he's going to be coming back for the sequel to that, which I'm not <laughs> sure. If you've seen it, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I don't care, I accept it. Exactly. But that's fantastic <laughs> casting right there, you know, knowing his place in, in, in this genre. Exactly. Um, and they're going to be, basically it's about this small town that they have a case of zombies, and they're going to be trying to fight them off. Right. Um, right. But you're going to have some interesting characters doing this, because um, Tota Swinton is, is in this. Yeah. Um, and yeah. she actually reminds me of her role in Doctor Strange, as yeah. the one, because she's swinging katanas exactly. at zombies. So that seems like a lot of fun. Exactly. Um, you know, this is oddly. I know how I prefaced this, but yes. Um, what was I going to say? This is actually a, a movie that I think I, I enjoy quite yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. it, it looks really good. I, I love the the acting talent is is absolutely incredible. Um, and you know, 
I think uh, Adam Driver is fantastic, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I think uh, you know I I am sold on that one honestly. Mm -hmm. um, jumping to the next film, actually, uh, I kind of skipped it here. It's coming out this weekend, mm -hmm. and it's Ma. Ma, Ma. yes, Ma. Um, take it away, Rebecca. Okay, so this is actually um, a Blumhouse horror film. Yeah. Who, they, they've been building up an incredible cred with um, films like Get Out, yeah. um, ha you know, Happy Death Day, and Happy Death Day to You. Mm -hmm. um, I think Us was with them, right? Yes, I think you're right, yeah. So they've been having some solid entries in the horror genre. Right. And, um, this film stars Octavia Spencer. Um, she plays a middle-aged woman who's befriending a group of high schoolers. She's actually letting them have drinking parties in her basement, but since this is a horror movie, her motives are sinister. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, one of the things that actually really shocked me when I was doing research for this movie is that this is Octavia Spencer's first lead role. Unbelievable. She, yeah, she <laughs> um, unbelievable. she's been doing supporting roles this whole time. Yeah. Um, you know, she won, she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for yeah. The Help. Um, she's also been nominated for um, Hidden Figures in the Shape of Water, but again, they were both supporting actress exactly. roles. Yeah. So um, she's such a talented actress, um, it's crazy it's taken this long for her to get her own starring vehicle. Right, exactly, and uh, yeah, this movie looks, uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it, um, but but I, I'm excited that she's getting a, a leading yeah. role, you know, I, I think that's what I'm most excited for. Um, it, it looks terrifying. Uh, but it also looks like it can be fun, you know what I mean? That, it looks like it could have a campy aspect yeah. to it, and it looks like she might be leaning into that, which right. is fun, because it's right. a different role for her. Um, she's appeared in a lot of period yeah. pieces, like all the three films that we just like rattled off that she's been nominated or won awards for were period pieces, right. so it'd be right. interesting to see her in the modern day, actually. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so, the next film I have here, Child's Play, Chucky's Back. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this is actually probably the one in this category I'm the most nervous about because yeah. um, I've never seen any of the Chucky films. Yeah, um, neither have I. Neither and I mean, he's been, he, you know, he's been doing this since 1988. <laughs> There's a franchise of, you know, so many films right, here. Right, right. Um, this film in particular is going to be like a remake and a reboot yeah. of the 1988 film. And apparently the big difference is that in the original film, the, the doll, Chucky, was inhabited by the, the spirit of a serial killer. In this one, it's actually a smart toy, yeah. which means they brought it up to technology. Right, right. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure, again, I haven't seen the original film, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah. I guess it's good in terms of being modern and adapting to the changing times, but is exactly. Chucky an app? Like, right. That's just the <laughs> right. <evil> app? <laughs> So, and again, the, these movies, you know, really aren't my cup of tea, so I'm a little right. leery of the, trail, the, the trailer, I'm sorry, the trailer looked kind of brutal in some mm -hmm. of the, what happens to his victims in it, so yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, it seemed like maybe not something I'd enjoy. Right, exactly, and, and pretty much uh, same here. I, I, I've never really had an interest, first of all, I'm not the biggest fan of horror, and I just like... The, the premise of these just never really grabbed me, yeah. honestly. Um, so, but moving on to another uh, pretty long franchise now at this point, mm -hmm. so with spinoffs, and you know, we have Annabelle Comes Home. Mm -hmm. um, well, Rebecca, take it away again. Okay. Well, weird thing is, um, there is a trend in horror movies this summer, and it's that it's the trend is creepy dolls. Right. So we're on our right. second creepy doll here with Annabelle. Yeah. Um, weirdly enough, Annabelle comes home comes out June eighth, and Charles Play comes out a week before. So you're gonna get bookended here with yeah. creepy doll movies. But um, Annabelle Comes Home, that's actually the seventh movie in the Conjuring franchise. Yeah. Like, this movie is, crazy. they're going long and strong, this yeah. franchise. Yeah. Um, but this is actually going to be the third movie about the doll herself. Right. Right. Um, this movie is significant because it's the first one in strictly the Annabelle fr um, sub-franchise that we're going to see actually um, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are the main characters in the Conjuring, the Conjuring films, right. are going to be right. in this film. Um, Annabelle actually started off in the first Conjuring movie. She was in the intro of the film, and the Warrens took her into their like haunted artifacts room because she's like a possessed doll. Right. Um, and her legacy kind of grew from there. But in this movie, um, she's not going to be staying in that room. She's <laughs> she's going to be an acting terror on it looks like the Warrens' daughter Judy. So and her babysitter. So I think we're going to be in for a wild ride here. Yeah. I honestly think this movie looks really good. The trailer um sent like shivers down my spine, which is yeah. a good sign. 
Um, I've seen the other Annabelle movies. The first one is not that good, but the second one was a prequel and a huge improvement. So right. I'm hoping this is more in line with the sequel, right. and, which is Annabelle creation. I was gonna say, I mean, this uh, this this franchise hasn't only been long lasting. It's been pretty solid, mm -hmm. really critically. And like you said, the first Annabelle was not the greatest, but you know, it, it really rallied to create a good. A good sequel, of Annabelle creation, mm -hmm. and yeah, it made know, a lot of money that yeah, first Annabelle movie, right? So. That too. So I mean, this is a really successful franchise that people seem to like, and you know, I I hope that critically they they keep it going because mm -hmm. it's obviously going to keep making money, apparently. right? Um, and finally, uh, now Rebecca the other day took the time to explain the plot of The Boy to me. Um, so <laughs> there's there's apparently a sequel, The Boy Two. Um, now. From from what you explained to me, this is uh, the boy is just a horrible film. But uh, we've got uh, we've got the boy too. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Um. I'm 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 not shocked. I'm surprised that they came up with a sequel for this film. But um, if you haven't seen the first film, I'm, I don't want to give it away. But um, the first film has to do with there's. Um, an older couple and they hire this woman to take care of their son. I actually don't think I told you this part, but their son turns out to be a doll. Mm -hmm. And it's in this creepy mansion and um, you know the, the woman is taking care of this doll and she discovers that there's more going on in the house than right. she knows. Right. Um, so um, I actually really like the first half of the first film, mm -hmm. but when the revelations came out toward the end, I really didn't like the film as a whole. Right, right. Um, but it, I guess it must have made enough money to warrant Clearly. a sequel. Um, so we have a sequel here. Um, from what I can find out, it's also set in the same house as mm -hmm. the first film, but this time there's a, a new family moving into oh, okay. it. And yeah. apparently the son becomes friends with the doll. Um, the you know um, the, the the doll, the boy, <laughs> is named like Brahms. Right. So right. you know Brahms is the name of this creepy doll, and. One question I had about this film is that Katie Holmes is starring in it, and why is she starring right. in this movie? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I don't get it. I don't yeah, get it. that I've actually, even though I didn't like the first film, I think I might see it just to see why is she in right. this movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's basically a curiosity film. Yes. If, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. Hey, who knows? Maybe they'll rally and make this spe spectacular film. I hope. <laughs> I don't knows? know. Yeah. Um, but all right, so we're gonna make our way out of horror. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, it. I'm happy about, and we're gonna go to the auteurs as we have it. Um, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Uh, this is the next Quentin Tarantino film, and uh, that was all I needed to know. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has a really great cast. You've got obviously Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie. Those are your main people, um, and this is just. I mean, I've I've really enjoyed everything that Tarantino has done. Mm -hmm. Gen in general, um, I th I think he has like a couple blips, but you know, I I really like The Hateful Eight. That's mm -hmm. his last film, and it was. Honestly, it's like a three-hour movie, mm -hmm. but I cannot turn that film off. Oh, wow. Every time it's on, so and I get something new out of it every time I see it. So, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm hooked. I did not need to see much mm -hmm. about this film. What, what about you? I'm, I'm a little, like, like interested but also confused about right. this film. Just right. because um, when I first heard about it, um, you know, it does star Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, fantastic actor. Brad Pitt, another fantastic actor. Right. Um, DiCaprio's playing a TV actor and Brad Pitt Brad Pitt's playing his stunt double and um, they're looking to chase after their dreams and movies. This right. is set in like the late sixties in um, in Hollywood. So I love the fact that it's set during like the, the era of classic Hollywood, actually yeah. more toward the end of that. Yeah. Um, but then one of the first things I also heard about the film was that um, Leonardo DiCaprio's neighbor is Sharon Tate, right. who was, you know, murdered by Charles Manson's followers. So um, it seems like that's not the focal point right. of the film. It seems to be a side aspect. Um, and so I'm kind of confused, like, how light is this film going to be? How dark is it going to be? 
Um, I am interested to see Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate. Right. I think that's an excellent fit oh, right definitely, there. Definitely, but I guess yeah. I'm not entirely sure what like what kind of film I'm going into. Is it more True. so like a love letter to classic Hollywood, which is what I'm seeing from some of the reviews that have right. come out from the festivals? Right. But then how does this darker component fit into that? Right, exactly. And the the reviews have been kind of funny, um, with uh, with someone we work with her he he kind of like read one and it was just like <laughs> it was just like absurd, violent, brilliant. And it was just like okay. it kind of went from like one aspect to another and mm. uh, it, it's like I said intriguing, but you're absolutely right. I, I don't think it's very straightforward as to what this is going to right. be, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, so our, our other film we have here is uh, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? Um, again, this is, I, I feel like this is a trend for a bunch of films, which is good, but there's, there's a really great cast in this. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Kate Blanchett, um, Billy Crudup, Kristen Wiig, Lawrence Fishburne. Um, you've got a director, Richard Linklater, who's, who's been good. Um, I, <laughs> I know I kind of was like cautious in saying that, <laughs> but like it's it's like the last movie I saw by him was Boyhood, and it's I feel like it's a very good artistic achievement that I actually really enjoyed, but it's very long and it doesn't really have a plot, <laughs> so I, I don't know how to like describe him in a way that like oh yeah he's great go see his movies because I don't really know that. Boy, it was really a movie I'd recommend to people. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is, and this is a movie where the premise is kind of, I feel like this is another one where it's kind of up in the air. I don't know what it's going to be, really. Yeah. It's Bernadette disappears, essentially. Right. Hence, where'd you go, Bernadette? <laughs> um, so, I, I think the pieces are in place for a, a very good film here, mm -hmm. but I don't really, I can't really nail down, like, yeah, this is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. You know, but what do you think? Um, like this, this film it kind of, it looks like a lighter comedy mystery. Yeah. Movie. Um, and I think yeah. there's family potential for this because um, well, it is based on a novel, but the story is about um um like well, apparently Bernadette is a mother. Um, and I guess after putting her creative passions on on hold for her family, she decides to go on this adventure. And right. That's where you go, Bernadette. Yeah. Um. So I think like it looks whimsical. Yes. That's what yes. I'm getting from it. Yeah. Um. Again, great cast with Kate Blanchett. Um. Kristen Wiig is in this. Yeah. Movie, so that yeah. makes me interested already. Yes. yes. Um. You've got Absolutely. Judy Greer, who is always like yeah. she takes she plays good supporting roles and whatever she's doing. Absolutely. Um. So this looks interesting. Um. I'm not sure how it's gonna fare at the box office. Right. 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 Um, so this will be like it's just an interesting film. It seems very different from some of the other films we talked about. Yes, yeah. But you got exactly. the name recognition of, of you know Richard Linklater, mm -hmm. who um, he has like you said he has Boyhood. Um, he did the Before Sunrise movie. Right, right. He did Days and Confused, which is a fantastic movie. Right. And he did the sequel to that too. So mm -hmm. he's got like such a, a variety of movies right. that he's done. I think he could bring something unique to this. Abs absolutely, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you named those films because I only named Boyhood. So there's much more that he's done uh, besides that, um, but that is all that we have on our list. Um, so I guess just to just to wrap it up, I mean, what do you think just in general? I mean, are you excited for what's for what's coming out, or like, what do you think this is going to be one of our better summers essentially? Um, I think it. I think it has the potential to be one of our yeah. better summers. Um, almost, honestly, you've got to look at a lot of the family type films coming out. Yeah. Like I think yeah. Toy Story Four, The Lion King. This might be a really good summer for families. That's honestly. true. Yeah. Um, and I think like it. It's just it's a weird summer because you had a movie like Endgame that was yes. so massive and it got so many people to go to it right off the bat. Right. Right. Um, and I think like movies aren't cheap. We know that. That's why we talk about them for you to try to help you sift through right. and figure out which ones you want to go right. through. But I think there's still some valid ones that people are going to save up to go see. Um, you know, being like you have your Disney's. Um, I think people are going to go out to Fast and the Furious. That's oh, always yeah. a fun time. True. Um, True. Godzilla. I'm excited about it. I think that right. could be a huge draw this weekend. So yeah. um, you kind of have some of some of your tent poles that I think people are ready for them. Right, and I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of variety this summer, mm -hmm. really. Um, you know, I, but I, I think that a lot of times summer looks great. Mm -hmm. and then it ends up disappointing. Um, so hopefully that won't be the case. But mm -hmm. like you said, just to build off of 
we've already had Endgame. Mm -hmm. That was our big summer thing, honestly. Now it, it's weird to say like, you know, movies like you know, The Lion King, Toy Story 4, like, aren't going to fare as well. Right. They're still going to be huge. Absolutely. You know, uh, so I, I think there's there's a lot to be had for everyone here, like you said, for families. Um, I hope that the ride, uh, the action film, continues. Absolutely, I really, yeah. I'm honestly hoping that Anna is great, you know. I hope that Hobbs and Shaw is, is great and entertaining because I really think they're, they're doing action right. Um, and you know, obviously John Wick came out, got right. great, you mm -hmm. know, got great reviews. Yeah. Um, so I think that I just hope that we continue to take good steps in action because um, I think we've really hit a, a solid spot. But yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of great indies, a lot of great you know, action, family. You know, there's a lot of great drama. So I think we have potential for a great summer. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. But, um, all right, I think that's going to wrap us up. Um, Rebecca, anything you want to say? Anything you want to plug? Yeah, um, well, jo Joe's going to be joining me on Take Two Blog. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So you, you can find us on Times Tribune blog slash Take Two, and we will have more content coming your way this summer. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's where I'll be now. So <laughs> I, I hope you're excited. We'll have a lot of great content for mm -hmm. you. And um, I'm sure we'll be back probably in the fall to do a, a, a fall movie yeah. preview. Mm -hmm. So, um, good. hey, enjoy your summer. We'll see you in the fall. Thank you for watching. <laughs>